After years of images, previews, interviews, words from the production team, and even a short film, we finally have our first trailer for Jurassic World Dominion, meaning we're getting very close to the release of this film, and we now have a good look at some of the things we can expect to see in it. This trailer shows us a lot whilst also not showing much. I understand films like Fallen Kingdom were criticised for revealing too much of the storyline, and that isn't the case with this first trailer. Because while we see a lot of different scenes, characters and dinosaurs, it's all completely absent of any context, leaving us to wonder how did everyone get where they are, what are their goals, and what's going on in general. We still have no idea as to the plot of this film or the goals of the characters, and I think that's a very good thing. Instead, we've been given a look at the film from a more visual and auditory standpoint, with some really big things being shown like the reveal of Blue's infant, the original trio returning, and several new species. Frankly, I would have hoped that some of these were kept a little more quiet, as the quieter the trailer is, the better the movie is. But then again, I know there are a lot of really interesting returning characters and dinosaurs coming to this film that have not been hinted at or shown in this trailer at all. So I know there are a lot of surprises and a large chunk of very exciting and interesting information that haven't been shown during the marketing phase just yet, and I think that's very good. One thing that definitely captures my interest about this film is the directing style, and just how different it is to anything we've seen in the past. This film is directed by Colin Giraro, who also directed Jurassic World, yet I find lighting, colour and cinematography, for example, to be so radically different to what we've seen in the past. And I think a lot of that comes down to the differences in setting and plot, opting a very different directing style. We have really extreme establishing shots, a very wide variety of colour and atmosphere, shots that are inspired by nature documentaries, a shot taken directly from Godzilla vs Kong, and other parts of this film that look like they belong to an entirely separate movie. This film is unlike anything we've ever seen before in Jurassic, and that's clear not only in the story, but also in how it's told. It really stuck out to me as I was watching the trailer, everything from the tone to the use of colour was completely unexpected in terms of what we've seen before in this franchise. This is a very different movie, visually and from a story standpoint. I'm not going to go ahead and recap the trailer as I'm sure everyone watching this has already seen it, but there are a couple of things that stood out to me. Blue's Infant, first of all, was created through asexual reproduction and is a nice end to her arc, but specifically a detail one of my friends picked up on is that Blue's infant is a genetic copy of her mother, complete with a blue streak, snout shape, etc, etc. This is important because it's accurate. Asexual reproduction is very much a real thing in the biological world, and because it requires only one parent, the offspring always ends up as a genetic recreation of their mother. So this is a very nice and very accurate detail by the filmmakers. Alan refers to Ellie as Ellie Sattler, not Ellie Degler, which makes me and a lot of others wonder if something happened with Mark and Charlie. I mean, let's be honest, Ellie seems like just the kind of person to abandon her family for Alan, so it's totally gonna happen. In all seriousness though, this film is going to allow for a closer bond to be formed between these two, and it's going to be the first big dinosaur adventure together for these three since the destruction of the original park in 1993, so I'm sure we'll see a lot of scenes and interactions that are reminiscent of the first movie. One of the things I absolutely loved about that is how Ian used to annoy Alan through Ellie. Either way, I'm sure we'll see similar moments in this film, but at the same time perhaps a new side to each of them considering the circumstances. Now, Wu's hair choices had a lot of me and my friends laughing initially, yet I think that, combined with his choice of clothing, can be quite important to his character. I've had some people suggest he's let himself go a bit, perhaps after his most successful project yet absolutely failing, with no sort of backup plan and nowhere to go or continue his work, he may have given up a little bit. I mean, both his previous bosses died, and he doesn't really have a facility or person or even equipment, as far as we know, to continue working. Perhaps he's absent of hope, especially since with this genetic power loose all over the world, he's going to feel far more insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Ingen is almost entirely dead, after a terrible reputation, and perhaps that has taken Wu here. He isn't wearing a lab coat, he honestly looks like he could have stepped back from the whole thing and retired. Then again, this is just the first trailer, and it's definitely too early to say anything for sure. Wu could absolutely reach his crescendo in this film, and I feel it's only fitting to give him an impactful role, especially based on what we know so far from the production team. Once again, this trailer is completely absent of context and story, so we're going to have to wait a few more months to find out for sure. It's safest not to assume anything at this point. 
This shot here easily makes me the most uncomfortable. It feels too much like Star Wars or the MonsterVerse for my liking. The showcasing of really, really large facilities in grand settings. Then again, we've seen some really large animals in this trailer. I guess perhaps it looks too futuristic, and I personally am far more comfortable with the design of holding enclosures we've seen in the past. It looks too alien for me personally. With grass on the roof, it looks like it could be a really luxurious hotel perhaps. I cannot stress how different this movie will be to what we've seen in the past. We also see a large swarm of what many believe to be locusts on a farm, and it's that setting and that situation of a farm in a decently arid location, housing a large swarm of insects of some sort as a main threat, which feels so un-Jurassic. The filmmakers are definitely expanding this universe, and the kind of themes and tones will be exposed to. The Quetzalcoatlus is my favourite part of this trailer, and I'm very glad to see how it's being utilised so far. The trailer finishes off with some very promising scenes, for example having Maisie being put in a very tense situation, which could also be referencing Arby from the novels, and how he was stuck in a cage. I also like this shot here very much, the atmosphere and location is bringing back very familiar and very good vibes personally, and seeing Alan holding a weapon is just great, it reminds me of his character from some of the games. This film is going to be different, and that's not necessarily a bad thing at all, it's just me personally, I'm definitely having a hard time adjusting to it. I do hope we can slowly ease into these new themes, and it can still feel very Jurassic, with the use of specific shots or music. I personally have always been slightly mixed on this trailer, simply due to how different it feels, and it may take some getting used to. I still want it to feel like a sequel to Fallen Kingdom, and a Jurassic Park movie in general.